guys, Cassie here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're in a different place on the floor. Yay! Because today we are doing Jesse the Reader's Flip the Page Challenge, which if you haven't watched his original video of this challenge, you should definitely go do that after this one because it is freaking hilarious. As always, Jesse's super funny. I feel like Jesse always comes up with the best like games and challenges and stuff, and a lot of them end up using their bookshelves, which is not ideal for me because as you can see behind me my bookshelf is very tiny and there's not a lot of books on here there's 36 to be exact and um yeah that means that a lot of times i can't participate in challenges like um the do i have that book challenge or things like that where you involve your shelves because my shelves are very small and there's not enough books to do things like that but I wanted to make this one work because this challenge was just so much fun. So I kind of figured out a way to work around the fact that I don't have a lot of books. So usually when people do these types of challenges with your shelves, you have people give you numbers that correspond to a shelf, a book, and a page number. So for example, if someone gave you 12, 6, and 47, you would go to your 12th shelf your sixth book on that shelf and then the 47th page of that book but since i only have four shelves and some of my shelves like this one right here only has four books on it that is not really gonna work for me so what i did is i counted all the books there are 36 books on this shelf and i put numbers 1 through 36 in my office mug so we're gonna pick out a number that corresponds to a book and then in my Whitmore College mug I have numbers that represent page numbers so we're just gonna do a book and a page number and we're just gonna skip over counting shelves because there just aren't enough to do that and then when we find the page number we can answer the hilarious questions that Jesse has come up with to create a whole little story and a new life for yourself and it's gonna be a blast so let's just get into it shall we so question number one says you are getting a new identity let the coordinates guide you to a book flip to the page you were given and the first name you see is now your new name book number is two so that's gonna be catching fire by Suzanne Collins page number is 78 all right, let me see. Names, names, names. Okay, well, <laughs> my new name is President Snow, so that's fun. At least it's like kind of a gender neutral name because it doesn't have the last or the first name in there. So President Snow is my new name and it's time to get up and move the heck out of your town. Apparently I'm running from something which I already know what I'm running from because I've read ahead but you will find out soon. The location of the book your coordinates lead you to will be where you are moving. So this one doesn't need a page number we just need to find a book and that will be book number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. wait, am I going this way or this way? I guess I should go this way and then this way, right? I'm gonna do that. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just Listen by Sarah Dessen, which I think is probably set in Colby because that's where most of her books are set. It doesn't say actually where this book is set, but I'm guessing it's set, I, I, I don't remember because all of her books are like so similar. I just, I don't remember, but it's, I think it's somewhere probably in, um, where are her books usually set? What the heck, why can't I remember? All right, I'm just gonna say it's Colby, which I believe is in North Carolina because it says that Sarah Dessen is from North Carolina and I'm pretty sure that's like a thing that she does. She like sets all of her books in the town that she was born in. So I'm President Snow of North Carolina. Am I president of North Carolina? Is this like a dystopian world where every state has a president? I feel like that is kind of stupid of me to run for office when I'm like on the run and trying to hide from somebody. Now I'm the president of North Carolina. 
I, okay. All right, number three, you're all settled into your new home, but you've gotta get a job to get that cash money flow going. Create a job using the first object you find with the coordinates and page number. Book number 10, Once and for All by Sarah Dessen. And page number is going to be three. So the first object I see on this page is going to be somehow related to my job. So let's see, page number three. I still haven't seen an object. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess the first thing that stuck out to me that's somewhat of an object was eyelash. So maybe I could be like one of those people who gives people fake eyelashes, like the extensions or something. I could do that. I, I guess it's like a, a side gig to my presidency of North Carolina. I also do eyelash extensions, so. All right, cool. President Snow ruling over North Carolina and giving people new eyelashes. Sounds like a great life. Number four, you've started your job and you've begun to develop feelings for a coworker. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first character you come across will be the character you're falling for. So for books, we're gonna go book number nine. Man, we're just like on these same shelves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know why I counted, because 10 was this one, so obviously nine is this one. Whatever. Ooh, this is actually one of my favorite Sarah Dessen books. Whoa, it's really bright. The Truth About Forever. Um, so maybe I'll get to be with the love interest of this book, and that would be nice. Page number 12. Nope, probably not. I doubt he's even introduced yet. <laughs> so let's see. Oh no. <laughs> so the first character name, I guess if you could call that a character name I came across was Dad. So I guess I'm into Macy's dad. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Okay. So also he's dead. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. I don't, that doesn't work. <laughs> I guess we can, we can say this is like a prequel. My, my life story is a prequel to the truth about forever before her dad died. And we work together at the eyelash extension company. Um, and he's the one who like is always buying those like buying stuff from infomercials all the time which i gotta say i find pretty fascinating so i could see if like i was a whatever what do they call those people like who do the eyelash extensions i don't know if i was an employee at the eyelash extension store and a fellow coworker was always talking about all the new things he's gotten from watching infomercials. I would be pretty intrigued by that. We'd probably have some good conversations. So I guess that's what got me. That's what got me fallen for him. For good old dad. <laughs> I don't even know his name. Mr. Queen is what this letter says. So. I guess, <laughs> so his last name is Queen and my last name is Snow. We just sound like, like super villains or something. I guess we could be super villains, evil people running the government. He's the, the first man or whatever. I don't know, is that what they call him? Mr. Queen is my first lady and we're uh, co-running the government and giving people fake eyelashes on the side. Number five, using the coordinates and the page number, the first piece of dialogue you come across will be the first thing you say to your potential lover. All right, hopefully we get like one of these books this time instead of all the Sarah Dessen books. Nope, it's number five, which is gonna be this one, Long for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. And the first piece of dialogue, oh, I need to pick page number first, 100. All right, first piece of dialogue. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, 
they're at the movies and they're talking about what candy they want to get or something and the first piece of dialogue I read was goobers so I guess goobers is the first thing I said to Mr. Queen that made him fall for me maybe it's like a like a jinkies kind of situation like I I stumbled and he caught me heroically and I said goobers I'm not making this sound more romantic all right good news that line really got to them next thing you know you're in love you're going to propose but buying a wedding ring is too expensive using the coordinates and flipping the page to the page number you were given the first object you come across will be what you propose with now I am gonna change this to that he's proposing to me with this item because I am a quite traditional lady and I would probably not propose to a man I would like him to propose to me so that's what we're gonna do all right please don't be another freaking Sarah Dessen book can we just can we do that 16 that's probably not okay one two three four we got the Savior's Champion by Jenna Moresi. And now we got it. Oh, this could be bad. <laughs> There's a lot of weird stuff in this book if I'm getting proposed to with an item from this book. We're gonna go to page 142 and see what Mr. Queen is proposing to me with. Or should we call him Dad or Daddy? Well, I, I pretty much saw that one coming, so he's proposing to me with a blade. So, also she's wiping down her blade because she just, like, killed someone with it. So it's like a dirty, bloody blade that he's offering me in exchange for my hand in marriage. Yes, husband, come in. You recording yourself? <laughs> Uh-huh. I am um, so to update you on my new life. My name is President Snow. <laughs> um, no, it's not fame. So I'm president of North Carolina because that's a thing now. But I also give people eyelash extensions on the side. Huh. And <laughs> at work. Seems like a, a bit below. I met um, you got better things to do with your time, I would feel. Like. I mean, it's just, it's my passion. Um, and then at work I met a man named Mr. Queen, who's the father of the girl in this book, and I fell in love with him, and he didn't have enough money to buy oh, me a cool. wedding ring, so he's proposing to me with a blade <laughs> <laughs> that Layla just used to kill somebody. Huh? So it's still got blood on it. Huh. So Not that's blade. where we're at. All right, we've arrived at your wedding. So apparently I accepted the blade as, as appropriate uh, proposal material. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first piece of dialogue you find will be the first line in your vows. Well, at least Goober's wasn't the first line of my vows. I guess that's good. Book number 21. We've got Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. This could be a hilarious start to my vows. Page 42. Except I don't know how much dialogue there's going to be in this because it's like a, a biography. So I might have to get, read through a few pages to even get to some dialogue. All right, there's no dialogue on these first two pages. Jeez, this might take a minute. I'm just gonna keep flipping through. Oh, I got one, okay. Uh, it's on page 48. You don't cut away from lightning in a bottle. Okay. Does this explain what that means? <laughs> I mean, she said that someone said this to her and she knew it meant she'd done well. So, I guess I, that's good. You don't cut away from lightning in a bottle. You know, I do kind of like the weird idea of starting my vows with an expression that I don't even understand. 
and then like continuing with my vows like it just it just has nothing to do with anything it's just there it reminds me of like something michael scott would do if he just like wanted to say something that he thought sounded profound but he doesn't even actually know what it means so i guess i can live with that i can be like michael scott webster's dictionary defines wedding as the fusing of two metals with a hot torch well you know something i think you guys are two metals gold medals Number eight, it's honeymoon time. Wherever the book's location that your coordinates lead to will be the destination for your lover's retreat. I don't really read a lot of fantasy novels, so I'm probably gonna have a pretty boring honeymoon location. 11, so it's gonna be Colby, I'm sure. Or actually, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11! That could possibly be the coolest destination I could have possibly chosen, actually. It's the one from the Selection series by Kara Katz, which means that my honeymoon is gonna take place in the palace of Aaliyah, which, yeah, I, I literally think of all the places I have. Like, I don't really read fantasy, so I don't have, like, Hogwarts or, like, I don't know, some cool place. Like, these are all just normal places, but this is actually probably the coolest place I could have possibly chosen. So, sweet, I get to go hang out in the palace. That's cool, except Maxon's gonna be there and I'm already married. Number nine, things got a little cray cray on the honeymoon and now you're expecting a baby. With your coordinates, find your next book and flip the page to the page number you were given. The first name you find will be the name of your firstborn child. Well, at least my firstborn child wasn't named President Snow. Number six, What Happened to Goodbye by Sarah Dessen. I don't think I've actually read this book yet. Wait, what? I have a Sarah Dessen book that I haven't read? I'm really confused. Okay, well, I'm reading this today. Okay, uh, page number. Focus, Cassie. All right, or President Snow, sorry. Page 57. Their name might end up being McLean, and I really hope not, because I hate that so much. Okay, 57. Deb! That's the very first line. Thanks, Deb. I like that name. I like Deb. Short for Deborah, probably, but yeah, I like it. That's a pretty good name. All right, Deb, better than McLean, so sorry if anyone out there is named McLean. It's, it's a pretty name. All right, so President Snow and Mr. Queen are <laughs> Mr. Queen. I love that I keep calling him Mr. Queen. Like, I don't even know my husband's first name. He's either Mr. Queen or Daddy. We have a strange relationship and now he's actually daddy because we have little deb in our care all right number 10 we're time jumping five years and your child is desperately begging for a pet find the book using your coordinates flip the page to the page number you were given and the first creature you come across will be your pet if you don't find a creature then the first object you find will have to be used as a pet replacement i'm gonna guess that i probably won't come across a creature because I can't think of many books I have that even have creatures in them. And it's book number four, which is technically this old book that I just have here because it's pretty. Oh, it's a Spanish reader. Actually, that, that might have creatures in it if they're teaching you how to say the names of, of Spanish animals. All right, um, well, that's too big of a number. <laughs> they're not gonna have that many pages in this book. 92? Are there 92 pages in this book? Yes, there are. Oh, this is all in Spanish. Yeah, no, duh. That's what a Spanish reader is. What did I think this was? I was thinking it was like, it would like have a Spanish to English translation, but no, it's just like all in Spanish. So I don't, I don't know what this says. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a different book because that 
didn't work because I don't know what any of that says. So let's try it again, shall we? All right, 22. Waiting for you by Suzanne Colasanti. I doubt there are any, I, do, I don't think there are any animals in this book at all. So um, why do I even have it? So we're gonna have to replace our pet with an object. Yay, little Deb's gonna love that. All right, let's see here. Okay, so the first object I came across was green paint. So I guess that's kind of fun. Kids like to paint things, but she'd only have one color of paint. So that's less fun and significantly less fun than having a pet. So our kid hates us now. So that's cool. Also, I love the logic that we, that I'm the president and I can't like afford to buy my kid a pet or something like why couldn't I get her a pet I just refused I guess I'm just evil I mean my name's President Snow so I guess it's not that surprising also my husband is in here now so if you hear clicking it's because he's on his computer because ah. <laughs> this room is also our office which is why I don't ever film anything in here because it's very small and he's always in here so number 11 your chill Chilled, <laughs> your child is going to school. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given. Using words on that page, create the name of their school. Uh, book number one, which is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Oh, I need a page number two. Uh, 414. Does this book have that many pages? This book does not have that many pages. So, I am going to change it to 314 instead of 414. And I'm using words on this page to create the name of Little Deb's school. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word school there for a second. So some interesting words that are popping out to me. Physical, camouflaged, Cato, navigating, smooth, stomping, Ear, <laughs> stomping ear, uh, boots, District 12. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's go with <laughs> stomping ear. <laughs> yep, that was the best one I could come up with. So we're going to go with physical camouflaged District 12. That's her school, and there she will learn how to paint herself to look like a tree so she can hide on the ground and not get murdered in the Hunger Games. Just like our dear friend PETA because apparently her mother is gonna like initiate the Hunger Games and try to kill a bunch of children probably because that's my legacy I, as President Snow. What is happening? My microphone's falling off. So my microphone just fell off, so I apologize if the last few things I said sounded terrible. I didn't notice it was falling until it was completely out of my shirt, so moving on. Number 12, you decide you're going to start a YouTube channel for a side hobby <laughs> because apparently running the state of North Carolina and giving people eyelash extensions is just not enough for me, which honestly sounds like me. That probably wouldn't be enough. I would need more. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and find something on that page that will be the core topic of your channel. Going with book number 23, Paper Towns by John Green. And page 318. There are not 318 pages in this book, so we will go with 38. <laughs> Okay, so like this entire page is talking about sex. <laughs> so I guess my YouTube channel is going to be about sex. I'll probably get a lot of views, so that's good at least. Probably not the best for my brand as president of North Carolina to have a YouTube channel all about sex, but whatever it's it's my passion i guess 
Question number 13 is find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you're given, and using words from that page, create a YouTube channel name. So this could be interesting if my YouTube channel is going to be all about sex. Uh, book number 15. Oh, 15. I forgot about this one. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I haven't read this book yet, so hopefully nothing I'm about to see will spoil anything. Page 222. All right, we're looking for a YouTube channel name. You know what? The first five words were in his choice of a wife. And I feel like choice of a wife sounds like kind of a cool name for a YouTube channel. Although it concerns me what that channel is going to be about if the content is all about sex. What am I saying about the important choices to make when looking for a wife? It's just, it's all sexual. There's nothing else that's important. But I'm going to go with it because I'm President Snow and I'm evil, I guess. It's just destined to be that President Snow is terrible. All right, number 14, find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first piece of dialogue you see is how you'll greet your viewers each time you start a video. Book number 17, Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. And the page number is 14. Chip says some weird things, so this could end up being fun. Let's see, first piece of dialogue. It also might take a minute to find some dialogue because it is, again, a, um, like uh, non-fiction biography kind of book. So there is no dialogue on page 14, but I will keep looking until I find some. <laughs> okay, uh, Chip, you can do this. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna be greeting all my fans on YouTube <laughs> and all my videos. It reminds me of Danny Gonzalez and how he calls all his fans Greg. So every time he starts his videos, well, what's up, Greg? And then goes into his video. So my videos are gonna be, Chip, you can do this. And then I'll talk about sex. All right, number 15, you've decided to write a book. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and using words from that page, create a book title. All right, book number is three. So Mockingjay. And the book page is 318. So what am I, oh, uh, book title, okay. I do tend to like short book titles, so let's see what we got here. You know, the first thing that stuck out to me was Cressida, which is just the name, and I really like that name. And I also really like short titles, so I kind of just like that as a book title, Cressida. And I don't know what it's gonna be about, Probably a person named Cressida, I would guess. All right, number 16, find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first line you see will be the opening line of your book. It better be a good one. Let's see, book number eight It's gonna be Lock and Key by Sarah Dessen. And page number is gonna be seven. Okay, this is the first line I saw. There was another house off to the left but it was visible only by flashes of roof you glimpsed through the trees. For all intents and purposes, we were alone. That's actually kind of cool. It's a little bit long, I think, for a first sentence, but that, that seems like really mysterious and it kind of makes me want to write a book now with that first line. But I can't use that exact first line because that's plagiarism, kind of. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of cool. So I guess Cressida, is a mystery of some sorts. Number 17, plot twist. The reason that you even created a new identity for yourself is because a killer was after you. Now that you're a mega famous author and YouTuber and president of North Carolina, they've tracked you down again and they're coming for you. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given and the first character you see will be your killer. I better not get like a Twilight book. That could be dangerous. 14, Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. Four, Sydney. <laughs> I don't remember who Sydney is, <laughs> but she's gonna murder me. Sydney, I think, is the main character of this book. 
Um, she's just like an average teenage girl. So that should be pretty easy. I think with my resources as president and you know all the tools I use for giving people eyelashes could probably be used as weapons. So I'm not afraid of you, Sydney. 18. One day you're setting up to film a YouTube video when you're suddenly struck by the killer. Find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first object you come across is what they used to kill you. What they used to kill me? So I don't even have a chance. I'm just like definitely dead according to this story. Fate has spoken, I guess. Okay, number 13. So that's gonna be 10, 11, 12, 13. The Selection by Kira Cass. And the page number is going to be 318. A book! <laughs> the first object I came to was a book. So I guess it is a, a, a very poetic end to my life that I spent so much of my life working on my book, Cressida, and now a book has become my demise. And finally, number 19, find the book using your coordinates, flip the page to the page number you were given, and the first line you see will go on your tombstone. Let's hope it's better than goobers. 19, this is The Lying Game by Ruth Ware, which I have not read yet, so hopefully the number I get isn't too far in because I don't want to spoil anything. 33, that's fine, that should be fine. 33, the first line I see is gonna be on my tombstone, so. <laughs> okay, the first line I saw is really weird. I don't know the context because I haven't read this book, but it's like, it's got a lot, it's like someone's thinking and there's a lot of um, ellipses over and over, so I'm just gonna read it. Doesn't make any sense, but. And then the talk, better for you both, more fun than being on your own. Continuity. <laughs> Schoolwork mustn't suffer. GSCE's an important year. So <laughs> that's what's gonna be on my tombstone, I guess. Just the, the mutterings of a madman. <laughs> That's so weird. Can you on that? <laughs> I like the continuity. That makes it sound extra like poetic. <laughs> like it's some kind of poem or something, but it just makes absolutely no sense. Okay, well that was a very hilarious and fitting end to this challenge. This was a really, really fun one. If you haven't watched Jesse's video, you should watch it. I will link it down below. And you should definitely do this challenge. Even if you have an itty bitty bookshelf like mine, you can still make it work. Um, yeah, and it's lots of fun. So my identity, I, I was being chased by Sydney, the evil murderer, and I became President Snow, president of North Carolina eyelash extension person whatever they're called let me know in the comments below if you remember what those people are called because i don't and uh eventually i was killed by a book and apparently the blow to my head made my final tombstone wishes complete nonsense so that was fun! I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And oh, that's gonna be it for this one. I'll see y'all next time and have a great day. Bye!